In this video we're going to learn a little bit about how to work with text in Python. A Python variable which holds some text is called a string. We're also going to look at how to get input from the keyboard in Python and then how to work with that input. To define your own string variable in Python you use the usual variable assignment syntax but you have to enclose the text you want your variable to represent in quotes. That's so that Python knows that this is part of a variable and not a function name or a keyword. So if we look at line number one in this first code box, on that line I define a variable called a and its value is the characters h-e-l-l-l. -L -L. On line one I surrounded that text with double quotes. On line two I define a variable b which again consists of the characters h-e-l-l-o -L -L -O, but this time they're in single quotes. You can use double or single quotes and it makes absolutely no difference. On line 3 I define a variable called C. C is just there to show you that you can use any character you like in a Python string. So C is a legitimate Python string and you can see it contains spaces, uppercase letters, lowercase letters, numbers and symbols. So there are no restrictions on which characters can go in a string, unlike which characters can go in a variable name. The last line, line 4, checks that actually A is equal to B. Um, those two equal signs you will remember are for testing equality. They show that despite the fact I defined A with double quotes and B with single quotes, A and B are in fact exactly the same thing as far as Python is concerned. It's important to remember that the quotes are there just to show Python where the string starts and ends. They're not part of the string itself. So A consists only of the letters H-E-L-L-O. It doesn't include those quotes. We've seen before that you can work out the type of a variable in Python with the type function. And here, when I run our second code cell, it'll print out STR. That's short for string. Now in Python, there are very, very many different ways to work with strings. We're going to look at the most basic possible things that you can do with a string in Python, but there are many, many other possibilities. In this code cell here, we're using the plus operator with strings. What plus does to strings is concatenate them. That is, it forms a new string consisting of the first string and then the second string. You'll remember that A was the characters H-E-L-L-O. When I add this to space world, what I'll get here is hello world. It's printed this variable out surrounded by quotes to show you that the output here was a string. Of course, you can add up more than one string using plus, and the result is just to concatenate all those strings, so to put one after the other. On the next code cell, I'm concatenating A, and then a string which just has a space in it and nothing else, and then B. The result will be hello, hello. Moving down one, you can get the length of a string using the function len. So if I type len a, for example, that's going to be 5 because a has 5 characters. You can also access individual characters from a string using this notation with square brackets. If you have a string a, then a square brackets and then a number i will return the ith character in a. But there's an important thing you have to know about the way Python indexes. Python always starts with a zero, so the character at the beginning of a string is number zero. That means if I type a1, that won't be h, it'll be e. If I want the first element of my string, the first character in that string, I need to use a0, and that will be h. Python also has a way for you to get what are called slices of a string. So that's all of some sequence of consecutive characters within that string. You do that with a similar notation to the one we've just used, so using square brackets, but you use a colon to tell Python where you want the slice to start and where you want it to end. So when you use the notation a, square brackets, then x colon y, what that gives you is character x, then character x plus 1, all the way up to a character y minus 1 of the string a. So it's important to remember that this stops at y minus 1. Not at y, but at y minus 1. Let's look at an example. 
So we're going to take the slice of A from 1 to 5. A was the string with length 5, consisting of the characters H, E, L, L, O. So A square brackets 1 colon 5 will be characters 1, 2, 3, and 4. That is E, L, L, and O. This is an easy way to make mistakes, so it's very important to remember exactly what this slicing notation does. In particular, that it starts, if you, if you take the slice x colon y, it starts at x and it finishes at y minus 1. Finally, let's look at how to get input from a user using the input function. If you do input and then in quotes a string, Python will print that string on the screen, wait for the user to type something and press enter, and then the input function will return what they typed as a string which you can then use. So the simplest way to use input is like this, input type something. When I run that you can see that it gives me um, the message type something and a box to type in. So if we just type some rubbish, well, then it will return the value which we typed. The usual way to use this would be to create a variable and assign it the value returned by the input function. So if you'd like to ask the user to think of a number, for example, you might do a equals input think of a number. When I run this, it asks me to think of a number, perhaps I type 22 and press enter. And now it doesn't seem as if anything has happened because um, what's happened is the value which was returned by the input function has been assigned silently to the variable a. So now when I type a and run the code cell, Python will print the value of a and you can see that the value is the string containing the, num the two digits 2, 2. An important feature of the input function is that it always returns a string. And you can see that's happened here because when, we've, when I typed in the 2, 2 and pressed enter, it assigned to the variable a the string consisting of the characters 2, 2. That is different from the number 22. In fact, at the moment, we don't even know how to turn that string into a number. So if we wanted to actually do something with this number, for example, if we wanted to do some arithmetic with it, a plus 1, you're going to see that we get an error. Python is confused because A is a string and 1 is a number. It knows how to add strings and strings. It knows how to add numbers and numbers. It doesn't know how to add a string to a number. So if we want to deal with this input that the user typed in as a number and not as a string, we have to do something else. That's going to be the subject of our next video.